Again. Say again, Pop. Grandma Benton. Your 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 mother's mother? Grandma yeah, yeah. Grandma Benton. What was her first name? Myrtle. Myrtle Benton. I don't know if I ever knew her name was Myrtle. Myrtle, yeah. I'll be damned, okay. Yeah, her 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 mother's name was Williams. What? Her the last name? Yeah. Weems? Williams. Williams, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she had a brother named Leonard and another brother named Luther. So Leonard Benton and Luther Benton. Yeah. That's good information to have. Benton's brothers. And Leonard was a professional musician. What do you play? He played the steel guitar. Really? And he was a he played with big name entertainers. Okay. He well, was from Arkansas. Okay. Little Rock, Arkansas, and he played with. Uh, well, that means she was from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, who? Well, you said Leonard was. No, from, he moved to he. They, so he uh, moved to Little Rock. Yeah. Okay. Where 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 was she from? Uh, Myrtle Benton, our great grandmother, my great grandmother. Well, she lived down in near Ironton, Missouri. No, wait a minute. Let me think about this. At one time, she lived at near Ironton. Okay. But she also lived out in Oklahoma. Your grandmother. Your mother, Ruby. Yeah, Ruby was born in Pitcher, Oklahoma. Pitcher, Oklahoma? Pitcher, Oklahoma. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, in a boxcar. In a boxcar? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, in a boxcar? Well, she was in a boxcar. They had a boxcar they lived in? Well, I don't know. I think they were traveling. Really? Yeah. They were very poor. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. This would have been during the Dust Bowl era. Right. Well, no, it would have been before the Dust Bowl because Grandma Ruby was born in either 1917 or 1919. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So what was what was Grandma Ruby's father's name? His name... Which would have been Myrtle's husband. Let me think. Uh, Oliver. Oliver? Oliver Benton. Oliver Benton. Okay, that's good information. Um, now um, Oliver Benton, and he died rather early in life. He was blind. He became blind. He became blind. Yeah. But we don't know what from. And you're, no, we he, don't. So don't, he became 100% blind. I don't recall, unless it was lead. Because your grandma Benton ended up working in what they call TIF mines. And I think that he did too. And I think that he died from lead poisoning. No kidding. Yeah. Now, when did she go blind? Grandma Benton, there was no reason why. She ended up with cataracts bad. And she could have, she should have had them operated on. But I would well, say the, she the, probably went blind somewhere around her age of 70. Really? 70? Yeah. Could they have operated on cataracts at yeah. that age? What well, would, yeah, they could have. The was, 70 was still, for her for 70 would still be the, the 1970s or the early 70s. Did, did they operate on cataracts back then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. They, I think so. Okay. I think so. Now, she liked to, you know, she, she lived on Dr. Pepper. I know. I remember the cases of Dr. Pepper that were delivered by she the freaking bottling company Dr. there in Kentucky. Yeah. And she, all she all she consumed was Dr. Pepper and cornflakes. Yeah. That's it. Damn near. She lived on Dr. Pepper and cornflakes. I mean, literally, she would eat it twenty four seven. Yes, she liked that. She would. That's all she drank. Cornflakes. Yeah. That's all she drank was Dr. Pepper. She didn't have any teeth, you know. Right. But you can eat cornflakes without. Whoops! I don't don't have you on yeah, on film. She had it with milk sometimes. Well, she didn't. She, have, she didn't have Dr. Pepper with cornflakes. No, she, she, she had milk with cornflakes, but she drank Dr. Pepper out yeah. of the bottle. And she liked chicken noodle soup. When I re I remember, she had an apartment. Uh, she had a, um, a a flat. She lived in a 
what do you what do you call a shotgun house? Really? Yeah, there were there were flats in, in, in what town? St. Louis? St. Louis. Oh, in St. Louis. Down, yeah. So what what road? Yeah. Or what part or what town? She lived off of Delmar Street, and uh, kind of the the north side of St. Louis. Downtown. Okay. The north side of downtown St. Louis. All right. In a in an area that had old homes that were built in the early 1900s that were brick. They were like two story and they had 10, 12 foot ceilings and plaster walls. And you, you, you entered one end of the house and, and she, she had a set of stairs that she climbed. I fixed the stairs, they were wooden, they were falling apart. She had a porch that went into the kitchen and from the kitchen you went into the bedroom and off the bedroom was a little door to have to a toilet and a weight wash basin. Yeah, I always wanted to go in a shotgun and, house. And and then on the other side of the bedroom was the living room. So it was a living room, bedroom with, with a little area for bath and then the kitchen. And that was her apartment. She paid sixty dollars a month rent to a family, a Jewish family by the name of Shu. And she there was a little corner grocery store on the corner across the street from her is where she did her shopping. And she'd buy her groceries there. And Mr. and Mrs. Shu were murdered. Uh-oh. Downstairs. By, by who, by like a robber or something? By, yeah, by uh, uh, black people. Their neighborhood was racially mixed. So this would have been in the 60s? Yes, it was a very, Poor neighborhood. With the, the 60s rather than the 50s. Were you a teenager or were you still younger? This, let's see. When I was 16, how, what year would that have been? About 1963, 64? No, let's see, I graduated, I was 18 when I graduated in 65. So around 1961, 62, she was there. And I think I visited her. I used to bring her, I used to work downtown. When I was 16, I worked for, uh, uh, well, I called her Aunt Wadey. She was uh, your Grandma Ruby's friend. Grandma Ruby went to live with her in Union, Missouri. After the accident, the car accident? Yeah, I think so. Is that? That's where, see, Grandma Benton had moved from Ironton area where she worked in the TIF mines to Union, Missouri, and she worked in a shoe factory for uh, making shoes in Union, Missouri. And that's where your grandma Ruby went to high school, was in Union, Missouri. And the lady that, the family that owned the shoe factory, your grandma went to work for them. And he was also the superintendent of the public schools. You say my grandma, you mean? My gra you, yeah, yeah, grandma, yeah. Grandma Ruby or grandma great grandmother Ruby. Benton? Okay, grandma, so, so your mother, grandma your mother went, went to work for the shoe factory. For the owner of the shoe factory, who was also the superintendent of schools. Okay. And he, they had a an estate in Tampa, Florida. Okay. And they flew down to Tampa, Florida. They in the, flew in the 50s? Yeah. They were a very wealthy family. They made... Um, or the 60s, a, a early popular 60s. popular shoe, brown, brown shoe, brown shoe, Buster Brown shoes. They made Buster Brown shoes, huh? They made Buster Brown shoes in the, in the late 40s and 50s and 60s. Wow. And they had a, they had a big... Um, plant a uh, big estate in Florida. They flew down there and they had a chauffeur that drove your grandmother down there to the estate Okay. from Missouri. So she traveled from Missouri to Florida, okay. Tampa, okay. with uh, this guy. He was a black uh, chauffeur. Okay. And um, then she came back to St. Louis and worked for um, a woman whose name was Steinbeck. 
He was married to a Steinbeck and had a big mansion in downtown St. Louis. Okay. Three-story mansion, many rooms, uh, bathrooms on every floor, huge, huge room, huge dining room. Dining room was as big as my house. Wow. And the, um, it, all mahogany. It had a staircase that was at least eight feet wide, all mahogany, went up all three stories. Each, air, these, these ceilings in this home were like 12 to 14 feet high. Kind of like this room here. With chandeliers. Kind of like this room here, yeah. except for no chandeliers. Yeah. And, and, and the banisters. The banister, I used to slide down those banisters, but, but to go up the, to the next level, there was a landing. And on every landing, there was a window seat and beautiful stained glass windows. Okay. In each landing of this house. Cool. So, and this, and your, your grandmother was... And not only did she live there, but she also was the in charge of all the servants, and she was a maid for Wadey. In in Florida. No, this is in San. This Steinbeck this, was in San Louis. Okay, okay. So, so so she left. She left dealing with the shoe people. Yeah, the, and Buster the Brown shoe people, not the shoe, not the shoe people that were murdered. Oh no no no! You're getting the grandmas confused. Grandma Benton. Yeah left in the 60s. Now, wait, see, when your grandma Ruby married your grandpa in the 40s, so she was working for Wadey, I called her Aunt Wadey, when she met your grandpa. Okay. Your grandpa was going to school at St. Louis University, no, at, at, at Washington University in St. Louis. Washington University in St. Louis, your grandpa was going to school there. And she met him in St. Louis, and they got married, I think, in 1943. Well, after they got married, then they bought a house in Thorpe, on Thorpe Avenue in Overland, okay. Missouri. All right. And in Overland, Missouri, they bought this house from now Wadey's husband. Saw, uh, Wadey's husband Steinbeck died, and had, and Wadey had married a guy by the name of Sawcell. Sawcell was an interesting guy. He was a G-man under J. Edgar Edgar Hoover, who signed papers to have Scott Camille neutralized, and also. Who got together with Johnson to kill Kennedy? Okay, I know who you're talking about. Okay, so anyway, Saucel was a G-man, and he had this Chrysler that he drove all over the place. He was an FBI guy, and he chased around um, Al Capone in the years, you know, and uh, Babyface Nelson and all those guys. And he was he was quite an interesting old guy. So when I was 16. Times had changed. Wadey had exhausted all of her wealth. Sassel was now retired and he wasn't making, getting a whole lot of money. And she turned that mansion into a halfway house for homeless veterans following the war, following the Korean War. Oh, the Korean War. Following the Korean War. Homeless veterans from the Korean War. That's right. And so she she was getting, um, they were getting pensions from the Veterans Administration, and she gave them rooms, and two two men to the bedrooms. And she had, she must have had about 12 bedrooms in that house. And so she had probably about 20 men there. And she had two black cooks, and several black servants. I think I probably need to say, well, they got to be black, but I think you're just explaining the... Uh, this was just, the times. Just, just the times, yeah. Just the times. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and, the, uh, and I went to work there as a gardener when I was 16. Okay. For 50 cents an hour. 
and I had a Fiat, and I drove my Fiat from North St. Louis. It took me, oh, an hour and 15 minutes or more, maybe an hour and a half to drive there from where I lived, where we lived in North County, because we moved from, in the 50s to, oh, I wanted to tell you. So Saucel had a property in, in, in um, Overland, right. and he sold the house to your grandmother and grandfather. Ruby and Bill, your, your parents? Yeah. Yeah. It had two acres and an orchard. And where was this house at? It was on Thorpe Avenue in Overland, Missouri. Like how far down the avenue or where at? Like on a corner or something? It was at a dead end road. Thorpe Avenue. Do you remember yeah, what the house looked dead like? End, dead end road. It was a house that was built probably in the 30s. Right, like brick? Or? It, had, it had a coal fired stove. No, it was probably framed. not anymore. It was a frame house. I remember it had. Wood frame? Yeah. No brick? It had a big porch on the front, it had a screened in porch off the back kitchen. It had a, a dining room and a living room and two bedrooms. Okay, maybe I'll see it one day. I doubt it. It was at the end of Thorpe. In the Thorpe Avenue in Overland, Missouri. Okay. And um, like it straight. I was about wait straight at the end or like on the one side. Well, it was right at the on the as you went down the road, it was on the right side. At the end. Yeah. Was it okay? All right. Maybe I'll see it one day. And. Um, and that was their first house together. Yeah, and then they bought a house on Marias Drive. Mor Marias? Marias, M A R I S. Marias? Marias? Marias Drive in Bell Fountain Neighbors, uh, Washington, which was. What? You mean Missouri? Missouri. Bell Fountain Neighbors, Missouri. And it was 900 Marias Drive. Good memory. And 900 Marias Drive, and. Um, I was about, oh, maybe seven or eight years old when we moved there. This was after, about eight years old. This is when Before I... Before you got sick or after you got sick? I think it was probably before I got sick. And what did you have? What disease did you get? Typhoid fever. Typhoid fever from playing in the creeks? River. Playing? Well, actually, off the, probably an Indian burial ground. Off the side of the river. As far as you assume. Probably. I think. That was in Centerville, Missouri, that I got sick. Playing in the river with mm -hmm. Robert. Okay. But he didn't get sick? No, no. no. I, I, what your, happened was your I... Your cousin Robert. Yeah, I fell into a... Into, the, into a grave. You really fell into a grave? I think so. Huh. So anyway... Um, So, about the time, I think right around the time I was going to become a freshman in high school, might have been, no, seventh grade, I moved, when we moved, let's see, I went to sixth grade in Spanish Lake, Missouri, and I went to seventh and eighth grade at, in Florissant School, in Florissant, Missouri. And I graduated from Hazelwood High School in 1965, which was, they tore down my high school and built an interstate through it. Okay. That was in uh, Interstate 70, went right through my, where my high school was. In Florissant? Yeah, it was Florissant, uh, Missouri, Hazelwood High School. Okay. Okay, so, and we lived on uh, Old Jamestown Road. Right. What, do you remember the Black address? Jack, near Black Jack, Missouri. Okay, do you remember the address at old, on Old Jamestown Road? Or do you remember what it was next to? Whatever. 13420. 13420 Old Jamestown Road? That's right. Okay, next to what? Do you remember any streets right next to it? Old Jamestown Road. Okay, but what? On just the, describe on the, the on house. The, on, the north, on the north of Old Jamestown Road intersection with Highway 140. Like right at the corner, the house is at the corner with one. No, no, it was no. in the middle of the middle of this old middle of the road. road. Okay. Um, Describe the house if you could. Just it was a, a single story uh, brick frame ranch home. Brick frame uh, ranch porch. You know, it was mostly brick. Uh huh. 
but there was some frame with it, framing with right, it. Right, but was there a porch with the ranch? No, there was no no porch in the front. Okay. It had a front door off okay. the front of the house. It had a porch off the back of the house, Any, oh. which your Uncle Roy built into a family room. Oh, okay. It had a two-car garage. Yeah. And it was a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath. All right, got gotcha. you. It had a stone fireplace with hearth. Yeah. It had a dining room, nice size kitchen. Okay. Three bedrooms and a bath and a half. Okay. A single story ranch on about an acre. It had a creek in the back. Okay. And um, uh, so, like I said, Lindbergh Highway, Highway 140, was to the north about a mile and a half. And to the other, to the south, about a mile and a half, was Parker Road. Okay. And Parker Road. Hey, if you can, pop your hand off your eyes. I know it's more comfortable. There. Parker Road. Mm -hmm. um, if you made a right turn off of Parker Road, you ended up in downtown Blackjack, Missouri. It consisted of a, a uh, two gas stations and a, a hardware store and a, and a tavern. Okay. And this is a suburb of St. Louis? North County, St. Louis. Okay. Gotcha. Blackjack, Missouri. Gotcha. I'm going to check into that. And Parker Road ran into Highway 67, three and a half miles to the east. All right. Highway 67 went all the way into That's fine. St. Louis. That's fine. What's it getting into? I don't want to. <laughs> huh? I don't want to get all the directions. No problem. All right. All right. All right. So that was 13420 Old Jamestown Road. And from that address. I enlisted into the army. When you lived at that house, yeah. And what did you do? Go down to the recruiting station, or how did you make the decision to go in the army? Well, I'd gone to college. Where at? Uh, I started my freshman year at Southeast Missouri State. Ah, oh, that's right, Cape, Cape, Cape Girardeau. Girardeau, Missouri. That's right. And um, the following year, of course, I had gotten. I'd gotten a music scholarship. I, had, I, uh, I was the first freshman to ever be inducted into Five U Alpha Symphonia Professional Music Fraternity. And you uh, played the trumpet, right? No, I sang. Oh, okay. I was a singer, and uh, I did play the trumpet too and the piano. That's right. But I acted in musicals and things in high school. And sang. I was I'll a be very damned. good athlete too. In, in high school, I was a uh, all-star baseball player. I, I got to play in an all-star game in Bush Stadium. Okay. In San Luis. What, would, what was your chances of going pro? Probably would have been pretty good. Okay. I uh, had a very high batting average. I could pitch. I was catcher. I could field. In fact, in the in the all-star game, I, I played both pitcher and catcher positions. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, dad, my dad, grandpa was pretty proud of me for my ball, baseball. Grandpa was very active with me in scouting and baseball. He coached baseball, little league teams. Did you go through Boy Scouts and everything? Yeah, I did. How far did you get? I went all the way uh, up. Well, I never made Eagle Scout. I almost got my life. I had star. I was a star scout. And uh, um, I did uh, finish through the Boy Scout and program, and I went on into what we called Explorer Scouts. And our theme for our Explorer uh, post was uh, canoes. As a matter of fact, we built uh, ca canvas canoes with ribs and, and varnished them, and we even floated those. We took canoe float trips, 25-mile trips, a couple of them. Wow. And uh, we took a couple... Uh, uh, we took a 25-mile horseback trip and a 50-mile horseback trip over weekends, which and your grandpa went, and uh, he went on one of them. I don't think he went on the 50-miler, but he drove to pick us up. And of course, the horses were provided to us. We rented the horses or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was active in several different things. I was also active in a church group. I was a leader in the church. I was uh, in a Christian church. I was the... What was, 
I was the, uh, we had what we call uh, Cairo, which was the younger group. I was the president of that group. And then in the CYF, which was Christian Youth Fellowship, in my teenage years, I was the leader in that group with uh, First Christian Church. Wow. In uh, San Luis. I was baptized in First Christian Church. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Would you, what, what do you think your thoughts and beliefs were, Christian wise, God wise, back then? Did you have it all figured out? Or did Absolutely. You, just, yeah. did, you did? You had it all figured out? Yeah. What? What do you mean? Yeah. I, I believed in Christ and I believe in it today. I believe in Christ today. Okay. And what, well, do you believe? Do you believe Jesus Christ is literally the Son of God and like? Yes, I do. Uh, like more more superior than other uh, spiritual beings. Uh, yes, but I also recognize that the other religions and uh, uh, have have significant um, relevance. Yes. Okay. In in the, I don't necessarily believe the Mormons are a little bit. Think they're uh, a little wacky. To some extent, I think so. No offense to the Mormons. But but, but for the Hindus, the, the Eastern religion, Muslim religion. Um, uh, you know, uh, I think Muhammad. I think Buddha. I think that uh, those those uh, prophets uh, and the religions that are under their foundations, as well as Christianity, I think God had a, a major influence in those religions being developed. Um, you know, I I think I think we go back in time. And think about religions. I think that this this idea of the all-seeing eye and the belief, you know, like on a dollar bill, we have a pyramid. We have an all-seeing eye on the a dollar bill. The, the 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 thought of King Solomon and and uh, um. Uh, no worries. I understand. I didn't want to get too 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 far off on this tangent well, with religion, but I just wanted to who, get your. Who was? Uh, I don't know enough about all the religions. I, I, I all I know is religion. Some things I can't remember right now. I know. I understand. So, to me, religion is. Uh, uh, there are many paths to God, but religion is the one that has potholes and highway bandits. I, I That's really, my thoughts. I really believe that there is a God. Oh, there's totally God. I've come to. I've come and, to. Believe, I've come and, to find that and, out. And the spiritual realm. Um, you know, I, I think that angels fit into a, uh, a an existence. No, they are. And I and I think that uh, the devil has a significant influence in lives of people today for the evil that has taken place. So you think you think Lucifer, the fallen angel, is actually. Satan, and you think Satan, uh, Satan, uh, I, I, Satan I kinda, controls yeah, the uh, underground know, of believe, evil or whatever. I believe that he's there. Yeah, I got if you. He exists. I got you. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm going to move this little interview to back to the to where we left off on you enlisting in the army. So, what made you want to list, enlist in the army when you were at King ja uh, Jamestown Road? Well, I tell you. Uh, your grandpa mentioned something to me when I was home, or when I was in college, that summer after college, a year in college, about, this was in 1966. Let's see, 65, yeah, this was in 1966. And he, he talked about Uh, all of the fellows I played baseball with, half half of my baseball team, okay, had already gone to Vietnam and, and were killed, okay, in different different 
areas. Like most all of them were pissed killed? pissed me off. It pissed you off that they got killed or pissed you off that your grandpa, your dad said no, something? it pissed me off that they got killed. Yeah. I, I didn't like that. I, I, I wanted to get even with the son of a bitch as it did it. Um, and um, when I went back to college, uh, Vietnam War was going on pretty strong. Uh, 1966, fall of 1966 was a, a really bad time. I think, you see, I was catcher. Bobby Adams was a pitcher. Uh, Richard Green played first base. Carl Schlomer uh, took over as catcher. I became pitcher. Um, all these guys died in Vietnam? All of these guys. I mean, the whole infield died. Holy Moses. And uh, it really pissed me off. And, and uh, I, I don't know, I've got a wild hair up my ass. I just decided, you know, I, I thought, well, I'm going to enlist. So I, I went down to recruit. Did you station. talk to your mom or dad about it? No. Holy Moses. I enlisted at Cape Girardeau. Oh God! Well, I, you're already eighteen. I, I, you're already eighteen at the time. I, 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 yeah, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing well. In college? Uh, or you mean? Well, what, what, what do you mean? I, what do you mean you weren't doing well mentally or? I was grades. I, well, I was getting frustrated with living expenses and and uh, trying to survive, trying to go to school. Yeah. I was getting, I was getting frustrated. I remember but the I feeling. I got a scholarship. I mean, they gave me a full ride scholarship in music. Oh, in music, you got a full ride scholarship to Cape Girardeau. They were going to give me a full ride in music because I was, I was damn good. I was a damn good singer. Um, yeah, I could hit, hit, every note with my voice, matching the sounds. That were required for the yeah music, and I read music um, easily. I take a piece of music and sing the melody exactly according to the notes on the right. Song sheet. Okay, so anyway, yeah, so. I enlisted. I went to the Navy. The Navy was booked. They, they had too many recruits for the Navy. The Navy was booked in Vietnam? In 1969, you couldn't enlist in the Navy because they had more applicants. Because to get into everybody the Navy. wanted to get the everybody hell out of the to get field. Into the Air yeah. Force. The Air Force or the Navy to, and, to, and to, no, to try to stay alive. Yeah, and the Marine Corps and the Army, even the Marine Corps was pretty filled up. Really? So, but those guys, so are, getting, I, those are, I, those I, good guys I, are getting I killed. Tested. I went down to see where I could get in. And hell, my scores were off the charts. Cool. Um, Real good scores. Did they have that ASVAB test at the time? Was it the same yeah, thing or something 99. else? Ninety nine. Ninety nine on the ASVAB. One hundred. No kidding. Yeah, and so they offered me the school at Huntsville, Alabama, for Hawk missile technician, hydraulics and electronics, an eight month program. That's where I got my security clearance. My secret, they, I, got a, I had to get a BI check, a secret security clearance early on in my career. Went to Huntsville, George Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. You know, I was a I was, I was a squad leader, and then became the platoon leader in the in the class. And I even got an offer to go to officer candidate school. At that time. Yes. But you didn't take it. No. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna. They wanted me to become an eighteen-year-old um, OCS person. I turned it down. Do you regret I that it, now? I, I you... Turn, I, you know, I was offered a battlefield commission in Vietnam. A battlefield commission is what? Lieutenant. And you what? Did, would you turn it down or what happened? I turned it down because I had only been married to your mother for eight weeks. I mean, eight days before I went to Vietnam. Oh, okay. Actually, not quite. We got married on the seventh of March. And I was in Vietnam on the 18th of March. What year? 68? 68. 1968. Okay. And how long after you had met her? Just a short time, right? Well, we communicated by correspondence. Yeah. I had dated her. I came home 
You'd only seen her a few times before you married her. I came home on Christmas leave in 1968. Yeah, yeah. 67. 67. Yeah. Came home on Christmas. No, wait a minute. It was 66. Okay. I came home at Christmas Eve. But you got married in 68? Yeah. You knew, and, so and you knew her for a year? Wanted, yeah, back and forth, and I dated her. But you only home. saw her like five times before probably, you married her, right? Probably. Okay, but you corresponded oh, for spent, a year? We spent a couple weeks together, maybe. Okay. Yeah. But you only, did you, you corresponded for a year? Over a year. Okay. Was she seeing anybody else at the time? I think she was married. Oh, yeah, that's right. What was the guy's name? Franchelle or something? I don't remember what it was. What, Tom or... I, have, I don't remember. Huh. Yeah. Ed, Ed, Ed Fauché? She saw him after I got out of the Army. Okay. In 1969. But you don't remember what her husband may have been named? No. You think she got an annulment or what happened? She got a, her dad got, her, got an annulment for him. Her dad? Her. Popsy. Her dad got her an, an annulment. Yeah, they got an annulment because of the, through the Catholic Church somehow. I'll be damned. Yeah. Huh. And she, she stopped being Catholic when she was 16. So I guess she lucked out there, huh? I wish she would have told me about that shit. Help me understand that better. Did you ever talk to her about that? No, I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I may have had a small conversation, but she I don't think she talked about it in, in much depth. Anyway, she was the first girl I ever had sex with. Right. After you were married, too, right? Uh, before. How did, oh, before? Okay. Well, that's good. I didn't realize that was before. Now, how the hell did that happen? You were probably a decent-looking guy and probably had girlfriends and whatnot. You just abstained? Yeah. Yeah, I played around. But I never had intercourse with my girlfriend. I was with a girl for four years or more. Mary? Mary, I really loved her. Yeah. And were you were you guys just decided not to have sex? Uh, yeah. She she didn't want to do it. I got you. She wanted to wait till marriage or something. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, times were different back then a little bit. Yeah. Not for everybody, but you know, it's pretty interesting. All right. So then. You enlisted, and you got through the Hawk Missile Program Yeah. at Huntsville. And then, then what happened? Where did you go after that? Straight to Vietnam? I did. Like literally straight? Like from you left from Alabama? Where did you leave from? I went home for 30 days leave before I went to Vietnam. Okay. When did your parents find out you enlisted in the military? Right, up, right, right after you did? Yeah. Yeah, I came home. You came home, came home from Cape Girardeau and told them? Yeah. What would they say? There wasn't nothing they could say. I guess they were disappointed. They were they were disappointed, or they were like well, appreh they, apprehensive. They were concerned. Concerned they would lose you. See, here's the thing. I came back after only about thirty or forty, maybe not even that. Let's see, September, October. I think I came back home around the 15th of October so I might have been gone about 45 days to college that's the sophomore year and came home and told them that I was going in the army and I went in the army on the 14th of, on the 16th of November so just a month later yeah okay so then a month later I was in Fort Leonard with Missouri <clears throat> For basic training? Yeah. So you had basic training at Fort Leonard Wood? Yeah. Wow, I remember Fort Leonard Wood quite well when I was like eight, nine years old or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, so so you did the remote program, you went back home for 30 days leave, and then where did you, you fly out of St. Louis? So when I came back from Huntsville, I flew out of St. Louis to um, 
Oakland. Oakland, California. San Francisco yeah. area. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then from there you went to the Pacific? Actually, I might have flown into San Francisco and then taken a helicopter over to Oakland. Okay. I know that's the route when I came back. I got a, I went to Oakland and went to San Francisco. Well, anyway. So the guy that had all of the personnel records for everybody on the aircraft. It was a charter aircraft. Right. Called World Airways. From, from flew from St. Louis to Hawaii to Vietnam. Saigon. Right. Tansinut Air Base in Saigon. Okay. Well, that son of a bitch who had all the records went AWOL in Oakland. He got off. Everybody, he got off the plane and went AWOL with everybody's records, with everybody's papers. He never got on the plane. So when when I got to Vietnam, they didn't know they didn't know what a twenty two K twenty Hawk missile technician was. There was only one Hawk battery in all of Vietnam, and it was in the very north of Vietnam. The very north of Vietnam. Very yeah, almost up so to the DMZ. Probably a high high level target area, right? Yeah. Well, they, they were they were we, we shot down airplanes. Yeah. That's what the Hawk missiles were designed to do. Yeah. And so um, they sent me to a replacement station in Long Bend. Because they lost the papers. So yeah. you, you were going to get so reassigned they, they, to something so else. The, so the guy there, you know, he he didn't know his ass from a hole on the ground. He was a personnel clerk. He didn't. He couldn't figure out what a 22K20, which was my MOS, as a military occupational specialty, and besides that, then I'm down there in Long Bend, and they didn't have a way to get me up to the north. So I spent two two weeks in a re, re, replacement station burning shit. Like just sitting around waiting for an assignment? Well, doing... Or orders? Doing details. Right. You know, I, I was an E4, so I wasn't the lowest ranking guy. But I had to take my share of details yeah gotcha and it was so they, they said well what did, what else did you do in I life said, well, I, yeah i built yeah. roads and bridges and i worked as a, a grade checker on uh, doing cuts and fills and with uh, bulldozers and caterpillars and equipment so they said okay well you're going to go into a, to an engineer company Combat Engineer Company? Well, it was a, a, a panel bridge company. Panel bridge company? Yeah, yeah. What was 500th it? Engineer Panel Bridge Company, which was a combat engineer company, technically. Right. And um, we built um, Bailey Panel Bridges, which were steel girder bridges, panels that went together like an erector set. And um, you, you, you build them on a... Uh, on the shoreline, you, 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 you set your abutments in place and you roll the bridge out to expand the river. Mm -hmm. And uh, we built a lot of bridges. And, uh, but the, along with that, we had, I became the operations sergeant for that company and uh, had the control on the, where the companies went for the, and the missions. We had two D-70 dozers, two low boy trucks, a Penna Prime 20,000 gallon oil tanker truck for making roads. We operated a, a quarry that mined laterite, which was used for building roads, and also rock. Okay, so what's laterite? A type of rock or is it a mineral laterite, or what? Laterite, laterite is like a hard clay based so it's a type of soil soil with um, quartz okay in it. was it specific it to tax I mean it, it will it would withstand heavy rains if you and we had two two rollers too we had two uh, uh, roller rolling machines okay ladder and, right. and huh. we had we had 27 five ton dump trucks and two 10 ton trucks. So how long did it take you to get this assignment where you had all this equipment? Did you get just like go right I, away? I, 
when I was assigned to this engineer unit, yeah, t t t yeah, tell me, tell me about arriving there and what your position was and how you got into. In okay, well, my like I, I arrived and I was a, I was a corporal. How far was it from Saigon? It was about about an hour drive, hour, maybe okay. hour, fifteen minute drive. Kind of north. north of Saigon. Um, okay. QL one, Highway one. Okay. Known as Red Ball Express. What 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 town would it have been closest to? Benoit. Benoit. Okay. So now you well, arrive. Actually, we were right. The closest town was Honai. It was right on the perimeter of our uh, unit. Area. Okay, gotcha. But the Benoit Air Base was um, well, about three and a half, four miles from where we were. Okay. All right, so you arrived by, they just drove you there in a Jeep or a bus or something, or what? Uh, I was sent from the Long Bin Reception Station to the two field forces headquarters in Long Bin. No, in Benoit, right. field forces in Benoit, and from that they assigned me to the 500th Engineer Panel Bridge Company. Okay, so you show up at the. Uh, I show up you there. Show up and there, Captain Ronald R. Wagner. Ronald R. Wagner. Okay. He had he had been a sergeant major in the Korean War, and General Palmer, who was the two force field commander. Um, had Sergeant Major Wagner got him promoted to captain. Okay. All right, what's the significance of these guys? They were running the show when you got there? Yeah, Captain, well, Captain Wagner, he was, um, he had already served in the Korean War. Right, all right. And he'd already been in the service. Okay. And he was, he was, he was a real gung ho military, military guy military officer. Gotcha. He's and dedicated. When I reported in, he said, Well you're gonna work in my headquarters and I says, oh, I want you to um, take over here as um, a company clerk in the headquarters. That's where my mom thought you were just a clerk okay. type clerk typist, huh? Okay. So in that capacity um, the uh, operations sergeant was an E6, and he was an alcoholic, and he couldn't, he, he was an older guy, he had been in for like about 30 years, 25, 30 years, and he, he was retired on active duty, basically, and uh, Wagner, being a pretty sharp guy, he said to me, you're going to be our operations sergeant. And so he promoted me to buck sergeant right off the bat. Like right when you arrived or within days or what? Within within two, two months. Okay. Did you spend a lot of time with him where he saw your credentials and capabilities? And, yeah. And I, you know, I had communication skills. I had a year of college and I, I had construction, highway construction ability and bridge building ability and um, he said, you know, and so he made me the operations sergeant. Well, there were E6s and E7s that are out there running these platoons. There were like three or four platoons of bridge builders and construction people. And so within a matter of months, I had become pretty skilled at building those bridges. Right. And knowing how to do them. And, and, um, uh, I ended up becoming the platoon sergeant for the headquarters platoon, which made me in charge of all, all the motor pool vehicles. Right. Made me in charge of the mess hall operations for our unit and, the, and also the um, supply business because I in my in my headquarters platoon consisted of supply, ordnance, I mean guns, munitions, bullets, everything. Machine guns, all all of the maintenance of the of the, 
of the trucks. The, fi the machine guns, what were they, 50 cal? Yeah, they had 50, well, we didn't have any assigned to us. We had M60 machine guns. Oh, okay. But I acquired Is M60 12 50 cals. M60 shoots the 223, right? No, M60 shoots the 308. 308, okay. Okay, gotcha. Belt fed. Belt fed 308s, okay. I was always confused on that, okay. And um, so when we took over, we built, uh, I've showed you the pictures of these bunkers we built. Yeah, you told me about I it. I got too. 12 50 cal machine guns from the Australians. We traded them rock for artillery gun pads. You remember I told you I had a quarry? Yeah. So I, I started running the quarry operations. We built a club. We built a fabulous club. Like for drinking and whatnot? Oh, yeah. We had slot machines. Westmoreland provided slot machines. Westmoreland. Like the General, gen, Westmoreland, General Westmoreland, Westmoreland gave Westmoreland brought slot machines in for your and you're running it. You're running this We're place. We're running this club. I'm but you're, five, I got five hundred bucks a month. Well, get this: my military salary, yeah, was only like three hundred and fifty bucks. But you were making five hundred at the club. I was keeping the books for the club. Holy Moses! And making five hundred a month for doing the club. Oh shit! Listen, I, and we hired Korean bands and and people from Australia to come in there, performers. We had Japanese people coming. We built a bar that cost four thousand bucks in put in, it in, in Vietnam this, times. Yeah, and put it in this club, and we had entertainment. And that's at at the Listen, at the construction we, we, base. Yeah, yeah. This was right there on our compound. <laughs> Holy shit! Right there, on, and I'm doing all this other shit. I mean, I worked like eighteen hours a fucking day or more. Yeah. You know, I'm having. I'm twenty three years old, and I'm having a ball. But I sent all that money home to who? My mom? mom. No kidding. You know what she did with it? Probably, probably she gave it to Popsy. Oh, really? She gave it. Grandmother. Are you sure she gave it to them? That's what she told me. Oh my God! I don't believe that. Over ten thousand dollars. I don't believe that. She. I, I believe you sent it, but I don't believe she gave it to him. Yeah. Well. I don't. She didn't have a good enough relationship with them to give it to him. Well, this was in Vietnam time. Now this is we're talking nineteen sixty eight, sixty nine. Was she living with them, or was she living in in St. Louis? She was. She was uh, living with them. Well, if she was living with them, maybe. Maybe if she was living with them, unless she put it in a bank account. I think she might have stayed at, at uh, Old Jamestown with my folks for a while. Really? Yeah. Oh. Huh. But uh, anyway, I... that's the story. Okay. So you you actually ran that, that outfit, the, right? Or, or was there a, a command, a commander of, about I had a lot of response. I had a lot of control. So it wasn't yours at that time? What's that? The, the the compound with this construction thing. You weren't... No, I was the operations sergeant for the unit, but I was also the bookkeeper. For we that had, club. We had, a, we had a guy that was the manager for the club. Okay. okay? And what, he, is this like authorized or is this totally like just, just this something, was, this was, something uh, nobody really cared about or just it, it, for entertainment or something? Yeah, people kind of looked the other way, but we were known, we were known as a kangaroo club. And if people came from all we had. We were, we well, had, that that was the name of the the, the, the kang, kangaroo was the name of the uh, unit. The unit, yeah, okay. Yeah. But why, we, why we, was that? Because we, we there was Australians. Right, listen, we were right there at Benoit. All the units we had. Eleventh Armored Cavalry was there at Benoit. We had the 199th Brigade Infantry Brigade was on the adjacent to our perimeter on the one side. We had the 23rd. Air assault. We had a we had a fuel depot there close by that had these huge bladders. They looked they probably held forty thousand gallons of fuel. So we had you know a right. fuel depot right. for all the helicopters. So you had everything. Yeah. So we had all these. We had there were, understand there were five hundred thousand soldiers in Vietnam right at the time and. The number of soldiers within the area that branched out from our area right. was significant. So we would have a hundred. Oh, they'd come visit the club. That's they'd right. They'd come visit the club. Holy Moses, man. So we get this. They heard about the club and they wanted to come. We were selling Heineken <laughs> beer for $5 a bottle. I mean, five cents a bottle. Okay. So beer was. They had Heineken beer in those Yeah, things? we had Heineken beer. We had Budweiser beer. We had. Schlitz, we had... Schlitz Mall Liquor the Bull? 
Uh, yeah, we Nobody did. does it like the bull? You had that malt liquor? That delicious shit? No, I, I never messed with that anyway. stuff. I'm just going on the and commercials. We had, but get this. Uh-huh. Mixed drinks. Okay, I got you. Now, Now that you know what I want to talk about? What about the ladies? Did you get some ladies in the club? Oh, yeah. We had go-go dancers. We had strippers. We had... No shit. Of... Did you ever have some action over there? No. no. You didn't? No. <sighs> no. Only in Australia. I got you. Damn. So anyway, um, yeah, so I was making pretty good money. Once in a while, I made a little more than $500, depending on the take of the club, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so I would keep track of all the books. I, 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 I was a, did accounting. I, that, I had three accounting courses in college. I had already gone through. Bef bef uh, as a sophomore or as a freshman well, as sophomore? Freshman. Okay. I had high school bookkeeping, and then right. I went on and I took uh, college accounting. Right. And so I, I had completed uh, those courses, and I was a pretty good accountant back then. Mm -hmm. I could operate a tin key adding machine. And um, yeah, that was before computers, but there was a lot of money that went through there. And even it, but what I wanted to get at, you could buy a. Let's say you had a, a fifth of whiskey. You could buy a fifth. You could get a fifth of whiskey for a dollar and a quarter. You could get a half gallon for maybe two dollars. Right. Right. Okay. Of all yeah. kinds of stuff. No, I got you. And 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 you could make and you you sold your mixed drinks for a buck and a half or two bucks. Big money, huh? Oh, big money. Okay. We were hauling cases of booze in there. So the the military basically just looked the other way, or this was something that people could do for entertainment purposes and keep yeah, keep spirits they, up or whatever. Was, was, so was, some general wouldn't come in and say, "What the fuck are you doing?" There was no control over our club. Let me put it that way. No control at all. So nobody, no general would have got pissed off or no. They because it was entertainment for the freaking soldiers. Keep the spirits up and keep everybody happy. You yeah, know? exactly. I'll be and down. I'm sure somebody got some vinnies out of that. Yeah, yeah. But all I know is I got paid 500 now, bucks a month. Now, yeah. you didn't partake in any action, which is admirable of you, but I guess other uh, other people did, huh? Did, did Was there like some stuff going on, on on the property, like with the girls, with the women? No. No? No. Okay. I'll be damned. Okay. All right. I'm getting a picture of, of it now. So it was a pretty clean club with a little bit of alcohol. I got you. Cool. Yeah. Cool. We're right at one hour, so this is a great time to, to, to get this video terminated and cl come to a close and start another one. Mm. Yeah, very good time. Yeah, that was... So that thank was, you uh, thank you for uh, thank you for doing this. We're, we'll do another one here in a minute <laughs> and see where this leads. Talk a little more about the Vietnam uh, action. I don't know. I think I'm talked out. No, you're not talked out. We're going to have to... We'll make this another time. We can't. There's not... There's, <laughs> you know, I tried to do this with my mother, and what happened to her? She died at 73 of a heart attack. Well, I'll tell so, you why. So you ain't going to live forever, so we're going to talk a little more tonight. Uh, thanks, you know thanks Dad. You know the rest of the story. Uh, yeah, but I don't have it on film, and I don't know the details, so I'm going well, to pressure you. you got something on film I wish you didn't have. Like what? Some comments I made one time about uh, your brothers. I don't think you I got You made it. a disc. I did? Yeah. You went through a lot of this stuff when I was at your house. You, you did a disc. And I said that I was disappointed in them. And I'm not disappointed in them anymore. I got you. Uh, I think they, they I think they're fine. All all of you guys are I'm sure you I'm fine. sure you I'm sure you were disappointed about the separation based on the divorce and t time after that. Yeah. That's what you meant, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. No problem. We'll we'll either cover that later or something, I understand. But we're at one hour, so let's stop this one and move forward. Thank, thanks a lot, Dad. Goodbye.